Okay. Okay. We're going to leave this door open to a little bit. They may get too much. Let me get a fan for you. I was going to say, because it gets really hot in here with both the doors closed. Okay. Thank you. Well, while she's getting that, let me get to, I'm Beverly Fast Sinclair. I will tell you a little bit about me. I, um, I haven't, I was a professor before I did this <laughs> and, um, I love real estate. It's a great way to take control of your time. You can make as much money as you're willing to work for and be uncomfortable for. Because sometimes if things like lead generation, things like that, or open houses on Sunday, you don't feel like doing. But if you want to be successful, you need to go do them anyway. See what I'm saying? Um, I was rookie of the year for my first year. I've been in, I got licensed in 1991. And... Um, I quit counting after I sold my 1,000th home in 2008. So um, a lot of experience. I'm one of the investor owners of this office and I am from Texas. I didn't know anybody. I moved here having met my mother-in-law, my father-in-law. Those are the only two people I knew in the state of Indiana. And I went to real estate school and it's like, everybody's going, oh, my college fraternity brother's doing this or my aunt's selling her house and things like that. I remember being so jealous. It's like, I don't have anybody I can go to for that. Um, I had my in-laws who I finally ended up selling their house like 15 years later after they'd been there 42 years. My sister-in-law already had a house. That was, that was it. And I didn't even know her when I moved here. So open houses are the best way to get business. I think ever, ever, other than maybe cold call, uh, calling your sphere of influence, you know, doing things like that. This is the, cause you're already getting people who are at least interested enough to walk in the door on a Sunday afternoon. And my belief is that most agents do open houses incorrectly. This is my belief. You will find other people in the office that do exactly what, I'm, what I don't do. You're just going to find what's worth it to you. But I used to do it this other way. Like, I don't hand them anything. Why do you ask that? Okay. If you look at, um, if you do like um, Forbes, and I'm trying to get other source, of professions according to um, how the public sees us in terms of professionalism, honesty, integrity. There's Kristen. How do I get, oh, let me get back to here. Oh, did I ruin your screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on, just sorry. Not I know what I, see I, your I, lovely I face. I know what I did, just a second. Okay. Not that, I was really surprised because I think, and most of the people in this office have high integrity, high professionalism, they're honest and they put their clients first and not their commission check. We rank just below lawyers and just above car salesmen, used car salesmen. So, the um, so do you think the general public likes us and trusts us? Having known that, no. Do you think they think that we're going to try to pull something over on them? Maybe, probably, according to the trust factor. So. Knowing that and knowing that I'm not like that, and hopefully I don't think you guys are like that, what you have to, you have a very window. My belief is that you, people will do business with you if they like and they trust you, okay? Open houses are a chance to get face-to-face -face with somebody and prove that, that you can do this and they want to work with you. So if you are coming into an open house, and I want, this is very interactive. I want you guys to talk and, and we're going to communicate a lot back and forth. If you didn't know anything about a house and you're driving by and you walked in the house, there was an agent standing there, what kinds of information would you want to know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Price, what else? School district. School district. Um, if there's like, uh, like the square footage and like bedrooms, bathrooms, stuff like that. Yeah. Anything else? Taxes, updates, HOAs, HOAs all that kind of stuff. Most agents will hand buyers, prospective buyers coming in a flyer and guess what it has on it? Price, bedrooms, about all of that. So knowing that they, most people don't like and trust you and they think you're out to do something to them. Why do they need you? If you hand them all the information, they don't, they don't. Now I'm not saying everybody's going to hate you, but I'm just saying overall, you're a salesman and we don't, oh, there's some really bad agents who have given us a bad reputation. So uh, one of my trainers years ago, years ago, he said, don't hand them anything. 
Yeah. It's like standing in front of them naked. It's like, what do you mean? I can't hand them anything. I got to give them something. And he said, no, you don't give them anything. You make them talk to you. So we're going to talk about why that's a good thing. And then we're going to talk about everything, how to prepare for an open house. Because I built my business doing this. My first year in the business, I did it the wrong way for about three or four months. And this guy told me this. And I ended up selling 31, 34 homes my first year in the business. That's pretty good for, for a new agent. And nine, I think 31 out of 34 were, were from open houses. They were buyers. So this does work. So let's go ahead and get started. With, now that we've got the presupposition over. Also, um, I am going to read most of this stuff, but if you guys, everything on here, you are welcome to go back and look later. You have you have access to Ignite, right? On the online, do you have KW command or KW login? Mm -hmm. Okay, you go into education and then Ignite 2.0. That's how you find all of this information. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> be careful about the do not call list. For the most part, I ignored it until I had someone turn me in and it used to be $11,000 fine. But thankfully, he did not turn me in either. I think the state, he turned me in the national do not call registry and nothing happened to me. Had he turned me in the state, I would have had to pay that fine. So you can check ahead of time for do not call. Uh, what I would do, and I used to do quite a bit, is, um, well, you know what, let me get back down there. Rather, I would go do, talk to them face to face so I didn't get uh, a violation and, and get by the do not call registry because some people are very serious about it and they do not want to be contacted. So, and I'm kind of in that camp too. I don't like when people call me. I hate it. I get calls all the time. Okay, so what are the benefits of an open house? First of all, it's inexpensive. You don't, you could do one for free. You have to get some open house signs, but you can reuse them over and over and over again. Um, you can advertise in Craigslist is a great way to advertise open houses, advertise on my board. You can advertise on Zillow. All of those places are free. Okay. Putting out signs is free. I will tell you, put out signs the Saturday before, put an open house Sunday, like two to five is when most people have open houses. Not always, but that's kind of the stereotypical open house time. I would put a what they call a rider. It's one of those flat pieces of thing that goes in the frame. So people driving by can know there's an open house on Sunday. But if you put this, I, I even sometimes stretched it and put them out Friday night. So Saturday and Sunday, I could get people driving by. I've also had in Carmel, they're really bad. I call them the sign police. They come and they take your signs. And then they put them in the sign graveyard. And if you guys see any, any of your signs taken, I'll show you where it is. And you can go dig your signs back out. I've been to the sign graveyard number one. Uh, it's over on Shelbourne Road. So, but anyway, when it's inexpensive, once you buy your signs are the only thing. And I would tell you, once you if you start doing your own signs, make them bright colored, make it the arrow really easy and put your name. Sorry, I just, it gets hot in here. No, go ahead and close it. I'm positive. We got a fan. She put one in. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Um, the other thing about uh, inexpensive and putting out signs, when I was a new agent, I put my name all over the signs. I had like a big red arrow and I would put my name in white, Beverly, Fast, Sinclair, Open House. That's all pretty much was in there. And Within like four or five months, people were saying, oh, I know you're doing so well. I see your signs everywhere. I had put out about eight open house signs. That's what they saw, you know, and perception is reality. They thought I was doing really good. And it's like, yes, I am. Thank you. <laughs> so you want that perception. I return on investment. That's ROI and exposure. Again, that's that that top of mind. If people think of real estate, they want you want them to think of you. Qualified leads from one listing, people coming in, productive way to meet buyers and sellers. Any of that? Have any other ahas on that? Ahas like, oh, I didn't think about that. Okay. So an open house does not start on Sunday when you walk out the door to go sit in it. If you're doing that, you might as well say, would you like fries with that order? It really is like 
working at McDonald's, you need to prepare because remember I told you you're going to have a very short window of time to make an impression on people that come in. You need to have product knowledge and you don't, you could be brand new and have product knowledge and it begins on Monday. So you're going to, if you don't have a listing, you can ask a number of people or put it on the Facebook future millionaires group or go and ask some of the agents who have a lot of listings. Can I hold one of your listings open? Everybody, my, most people will say, yes, I'd be happy for you to. So Tuesday, you're going to post online. That means Facebook. That means Craigslist. That means Zillow. I mean, you're going to post as many things and many social media sites, LinkedIn, if you have it. What's the big one now? TikTok? I don't even know. I'm so old. My daughter would be able to tell you. It used to be, oh, I don't know. Anyway, oh, you guys are young. You'll figure it out. <laughs> and then you can call 25 neighbors. But what I used to do is I would do like a, a half page flyer, like that size page, fold it in half, have a picture of the outside of the house, have the bedrooms, bathrooms, price, and my information on there, my name, my phone number, and my email. And I would go knock on doors and I'd say, hey, because here's the thing. Studies have shown that five people on either side or 10 people across, one of them is going to move within the next year. So you need to get in there and start getting in touch with them. And I, I've seen this happen over and over and over again. It's absolutely true. I would just knock on the door and say, hi, I'm holding the Johnson's house open from two to five Sunday. Here's a flyer on it. Who do you know that might be interested in looking at the neighborhood or looking at this house? Don't say, do you know anybody? Because what are they going to say? No. So you can say, who do you know? And they just look, look for me from and I said, like maybe from work or from church or whomever, who do you know that might be looking to make a move? And let them talk about it. They will talk to you. Don't be afraid because neighbors, especially, they're nosy. They want to know what's going on in the neighborhood. What's it going for? What's it like? And, and I would talk to them as much as I can because, again, you're building a rapport. You want them when they think about real estate, oh, that was that girl that came to the front door. If I had a good conversation with them. I'll also hand them one of my business cards and say, please think of me the next when you're looking to buy or sell an investment property or a home. I would also, I would also had a pad of paper. I had like a little, it was a Vera Bradley just opens bag and a pad of paper and I'd write their address and I'd write a note about them. And then I would send them a thank you note. Because again, you need eight touches before someone you'll be top of mind. So I would write them a thank you note. Um, the other thing I would do, I would do the five neighbors on either side and 10 across. That won't take you hardly any time. I promise you, no one's going to yell at you. You'll get more people talking to you than you will at other things. And just smile and look at them and be friendly and be excited about it. It is not that hard. And uh, they may not talk about it. Okay, thank you. They may say that and close the door, but they're not going to be mean to you. Um, the other thing I would do um, is I had this happen one time I was going to an open house and I put signs on the corner because from six feet into the sidewalk, technically that's city, but people still owe it. They put my signs down and they say, you don't have our permission to put this sign in your yard. It's like, great. So I went to the door and I said, I am so sorry. You're exactly right. And I used to carry things like I had cookbooks that I had my name on them. I had five, I had, um, car wash coupons, you know, it's not that much to get a, a car wash coupon or a $5 Starbucks card. I say, here, this is for you. I'm so sorry. Would you mind if I put it there just for today? And next time I'll ask your permission. I guarantee you no other agents doing that because you, I, I don't know about you guys, but I go, oh, they're not going to like me. They're going to yell at me. Blah, blah, blah. I was so afraid of people yelling at me. I've never had anybody yell at me. You, know, you guys have that fear at all? Or someone being mean to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you'll say, I, I'm really busy, but thanks. But nobody's been like mean. So go and ask the people on the corners because you want to put out as many open signs as you can. OK, start from major intersections like 116th and Meridian. If you're going to have an open house here and it's in a neighborhood not too far away, I would even sometimes start from two major intersections like 116th and Keystone and 116th and Meridian if it was between the two. Because remember, you're getting your name out there. The other thing is make sure your arrows point the same direction. 
<laughs> I have went before I started teaching open houses. I went to view how other agents do open houses from other companies. One of them I couldn't find. One of his arrows was wrong. I never did find the house. So make sure they're pointing the right way. Put out as many. I would like to put out. I'd like to put out a minimum of eight signs. I mean, have it everywhere. Because again, it lets people know that they're thinking, oh, you know, Beverly, yeah, I see her signs everywhere. Um, so knock on 25 neighbors' doors. You can do 20, 5, 5, and 10. Or, you know, the people on the corners, anywhere you're going to put a sign, stop and say, I'm having an open house here Sunday. Would you mind terribly if I put a sign in your yard and I'll pick it up promptly after the open house? And then after that, after you pick it up, what should you then do? Thank you, yep. Put a little, put your card and maybe a car wash coupon in there or a $5 Starbucks card, anything like that, because I'm guaranteeing you, nobody else is doing that kind of stuff. And it will make you top of mind. They'll remember. They will. Okay. Wednesday, post online. And I would really do all of these steps. Absolutely. Post online. If you don't have the KW mobile search app on your phone, get it. The nice thing about it is if, if even if you look at other people's listings, other companies, it frames it with your information on your phone. And you can get your own code that you can pass out and you can even have those written out and give it to people. Say, if you ever want to know what the price of the house is or see the pictures of the inside it from the curb, here's my mobile, here's the app. Down, put this in and download the app and everything is on the market you will have access to. Do you think buyers might want to know that information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they absolutely would. But it frames it in all your information. If they scroll down to the bottom, which they probably won't, it might tell the listing agent's information, but your stuff, your name, your face, your phone number is anything that's prominent. Okay. Put a sign in the yard. Now the sign, you can put an open house sign in the yard like Monday. It's no problem. Open Sunday, you can also put the writer. It says open Sunday, like two to five, because there's a lot of different times people home hold open houses. You can do that. I would put a couple of, I, I just sold my house over in Speedway and I put two signs in the front yard because it was on 16th Street. Of, with the race coming up, I got lots of calls, lots and lots and lots of calls. Okay. Thursday, post online, invite your database, go on Facebook, put a picture of the property, talk about it. What other social media sites do you guys use? Instagram, Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Post on all of that. Absolutely. Return yards, oh, return yard site and calls. So somebody calls on it. And by the way, put open Sunday, always have your name and your information on there. Because remember, if it's not your listing, it's going to have the listing agents. And that's fine, but you're doing this for you. You know what I'm saying? You want to be the one to get the calls as a result of the open house. Now, are you the listing agent? No, but I would maximize your chance to get business if I could. So I always had like I had open house signs, my name, and I would have either my phone number or my list, my website or something on the bottom. OK, you could in turn be like the buyer's agent, right? Absolutely. You could. Absolutely. That's what you're going for. You're trying to pick up buyers at an open house. Yep. I'm going to teach you how to set yourself up to make that happen. Okay, proposed, post online, prepare market stats. You Now, that is not like things like, here's the average sales price of, like if you're holding a house open in Spring Mill Ponds, it's right over there, west side. I'm turned around here. <laughs> it might be over there. Uh, you can, when, have you been to my board training yet? Okay. We can help you if you have an open house, if you want to do statistics, but basically you can go like do subdivision names, Spring Mill Stream. I live in Brookshire, Brookshire, average days in the market, average square footage, average sales price, things like that. If you want to, I usually have like a piece of paper and I try to, you don't have to memorize a lot, but if you can memorize just a few key things and say them off, off the top of your head, you look so smart to these people. They think, man, they know everything. And really all you memorized was a small body of knowledge. Um, you can look, you can post, if I were you too, when you're previewing hot properties, did they have up here? I forgot if they had previewing properties. You need to preview at least 10 properties, preferably. Yeah, it doesn't have preview. Sometime before Saturday, I would pick 10 houses, 
to go physically see. I would pick the other houses in the subdivision for sure. Uh, I would also pick houses in neighboring subdivisions that are maybe less expensive or maybe more expensive. If this house has an unfinished basement, I would pick some place in the general area that has a finished basement with similar price. You just need to know something about homes in, that are similar to this one, but maybe a little bit newer, a little bit older, more expensive, less expensive. Uh, have a three-car garage versus a two-car garage. Because you need to have, and I would take those listing sheets, the MLS sheets, I would bring them with you to the open house because you want We'll get to it, but you're going to want to have some of that product knowledge, and I'll, I'll share that with you in just a second. Um, <clears throat> Friday, post online again, prepare market stats again. You print. I, don't, I wouldn't print anything. I would have a, a listing sheet. If you want to have a listing sheet, like that says everything, I, I wouldn't even do that because, again, if they want to know the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the prices, the square footage, the taxes, and everything, what does a listing sheet have on it? Bedrooms, bathrooms, prices, square footage, et cetera. So I would need to have it out. Make them talk to you. Now, you can hold your own listing sheet, but I wouldn't give it to them. Um, print up and house flyers, I wouldn't do it. The other thing I wouldn't do is sometimes, I don't think they do it so much anymore because everything's so digital, but I don't think many people, but if you see anybody has like a, a, a flyer box, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Take everything out of there and put it inside the house. Refill it as you leave because you don't want people screening you from the car. Getting, I've seen people get out, look at it and go, because uh, that's my opportunity. Those people could need representation and that should be me. You know, I'm saving this from the other, from the other unscrupulous realtors out there. <laughs> really do look at it like that. I'm saving this from some agents I'm thinking in my mind that I'm not going to say. Uh, Place directional signs. I do it maybe if you want to push it Friday, Saturday for sure. Directional signs and put as many out as you can. Honestly, you want your name everywhere. Go from big major streets and do every turn. You want to make it easy, easy, easy. And again, you've already talked to the neighbor. Most neighbors don't mind, but people on the corners probably get tired of it. So be different. And then um, door knock some more. All right, here is Kaylee. I'm gonna have you go first, read that. Hello, this is Kaylee from... If you aren't on the team, you can say with Keller Williams. Yeah. Okay, hello, this is Kaylee with Keller Williams. I'm at your door because homeowner's name have asked me to invite you to the open house on their home at 123 Main Street on Saturday from two to five. Okay. I'll keep reading. Mm -hmm. Feel free to bring someone with you from work or a friend or relative that might be interested in buying in your neighborhood. By the way, when I find a buyer, I'd like to be able to share with them what people like about the neighborhood. May I ask you what it is that you like about the neighborhood? Excellent. And if you were to move, where would you go next and when might that be? Would any of you be upset if somebody said that to you at your door? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't either. So these are friends you haven't met yet. I had to Maybe you guys don't struggle with your mind, what goes up the thoughts between your mind and fear of rejection like I did. But um, I just think that you're my friend. You just don't know it yet. We haven't met, but you're going to be my friend. And I'd approach him like, you're my friend. Hi. <laughs> okay. I, you, I'd memorize some of this stuff. I really wouldn't. I really would. And just make it your own. But that, that's an excellent script when you go to the door. Okay, so you're at the morning, you're at the day of the open house. I will tell you, most open houses are Sunday, like I said. Some do 12 to two or three to five. I find two to five to be, the, that's, I've been in business a long time, but for a while it was like sheep. Everybody just went out between two and five. <laughs> but um, get there early, okay? If it's your listing, you need to prep your seller. Um, Tell them to open all the blinds, open the curtains, make sure it's clean. I've been to some open houses that are disgusting, disgustingly dirty. So I'm going to, I think it's later on in that thing, but I'm going to tell you, take a minute right now and tell you, I would have an open car, open house kit in my car. And it would have some of the following things. Number one, you might want to write these down. Pet fresh carpet deodorizer. Some people cannot smell their dogs because they live with them. 
But if you walk in and you smell dogs, just sprinkle some of that on there. It will help you. Um, like the other thing is like some amazing orange or some kind of uh, really strong scent blocker for smokers. You don't want it to be like overwhelming floral or pine oak pine. I got pine oak pine. <laughs> you don't want that. If it's a vacant house, find out the listing agent may neglect to tell you it's a vacant house. Bring a chair. I have a folding chair. I have my open houses. You want to bring all your comparable sales. You want to bring toilet paper in case they don't have any. You'll want to bring paper towels and like some uh, 409 or Fantastic or some kind of cleaner, maybe some Windex wipes. And I would get there a half hour early and go through and turn on every light in the house, open every blind, every curtain. Uh, what else do you need? Some open house sign up sheets. There are other things I'm forgetting. I'll think about it, but keep that list. And I would have those kind of things in my car. Are the open house sign up sheets basically where like all the people come in? I we have there's no form I'll share with you mine it's it's just a piece of paper and it says what you like best what you like worse what you think the price the most important thing is name address phone number email the that's what you want you want to a build a rapport and b get their information because if they say pick up a, a, a business card and say I'll call you that's a blow off they may intend to call you, but I will tell you 99 times up 100, they don't. They don't want to hurt your feelings and say, you know, I'm not sure what I want to do, but I'm not ready to commit myself to working with you. That's why you want to be in control of the, the names and the phone numbers and the emails. I've had some people write really, really bad, so I couldn't read it. So I've learned when they're walking out, I'll say, oh, let me just double check this phone number. Is this 752? You know? So you're ready for the open houses. You have all the signs out. The inside has been staged. Um, it's not dirty. There's not dishes in this. I mean, most of the time, that ain't going to happen. Most of the time, people will clean their house. But you never know. Um, turn the light is look as best as can, and people start walking to the door. If I see someone to the walking to the door, I will go and I will open the door first and say, hi, welcome. I will smile and I'll look them in their eyeballs. Don't. Don't be afraid of people. You know, you want, again, these are your friends you haven't met yet, but they're going to be your friends. That's really how I started looking at it. I got tons of business from open houses. It was like shooting fish in a barrel. Honest to goodness. I got lots of business from open houses. Um, what I would do, and again, this is what I did. There's some people hand them a clipboard and tell them to go around and like, but I, I personally, I guess I do what I, I wouldn't want. It's like, I'm not doing work for you. You know, what are you doing handing me stuff? I'm going to look at the house. I don't carry on a clipboard, you know, but some people love that and they get good results with it. Some people hand them a flyer and talk to them. They get great results. I did not. So I make them talk to me. I will greet them at the door. I'll smile. I used to shake their hand. I'm with COVID and everything going on with that. I would maybe like say, open the door and say, welcome or something, but I wouldn't touch them because some people really don't like that, you know? And I would say, I'm Beverly Fast Sinclair and raise your eyebrows and lean in a little bit. Like, come on, give me your name. <laughs> and they don't say anything and you are, great, well, welcome. Are you familiar with the area? I would ask them something that's not a yes or no, like a question or what do you know about the area? Things like that. Um, and you just chitty chat for a little bit. Sometimes the high eye kind of people will start, oh, we're moving here from Minnesota. We've only been, we only have this weekend. We have to buy a house. They'll tell you everything. And other people are going to be very close to the best. They won't tell you anything. If they won't give me their first and their last name, I don't tell them anything about the house. I literally don't. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to play with me. I'm not playing with you either. I'll say, okay, come on in. And we'll so what does that look like? <laughs> yeah and one guy said the, the guy who taught me a lot of this he didn't say things he said, come on in and they said what's the price he said oh it's a contest what do you think it should be and they said they looked at it and the guy handed him a card when he left he was in sales and he didn't want to give the information but he knew what bill was doing he said we're interested give me a call on monday and they say like oh and i did it to several people one guy I ended up being friends with he said, what's the price? I said, I don't know. What do you think it should be? I didn't tell him anything, but they heard me say it to everybody else. And later he said, why didn't you tell me anything? I said, because you wouldn't tell me your name. I don't. 
I say, well, come in, look around. I really don't. If you aren't going to even at least give me that much, I'm not, I'm not here to ask if you want fries with that order. I, I'm not. That's what it felt like to me. Now, I don't know if you feel confident doing that, but I did. I got tired of it. Mm -hmm. If you at least give you the names, and most people will, just say, great. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this property, okay? And like, I'll describe my house. There's a few key bits of information. You want to tell them the bedrooms, bathrooms in this order. Write this down. Bedrooms, bathrooms. If there's any kind of basement, like finished, full, whatever. Um, square footage. Price. Oh, my sorry. Price will be last. Also, I would pick three things. So it's bedrooms, bathrooms, basement, square footage. Rough. Those are in the top three. Don't have to be in that order. I would also pick three things that make that house special. That maybe they're not going to notice. And then end with the price we're being offered at X. So, for example, if I was to describe my house, I would say this house, and sometimes I'll get the year built too. This house was built in 1973 by George Swank. He was a very well-known custom builder in the area. There's five bedrooms and three full baths, four bedrooms up with the first, the fifth bedroom and the third full bath are on the main level. We have a full finished basement. And as you're looking through, I just want to point out a couple of things. We are in the golf course, great views. And because it's the chipping range and the driving range, you don't get a lot of balls hitting your roof or anything like that, but just looks like a park out there. The kitchen was taken to the studs several years ago, as were both bathrooms taken down to the studs and some things like you didn't know, like the, the master has heated tile floors and all the paint and the flooring, hardwood flooring is new. We're offered at $449.9 and I'm going to let you look around on your own. How did that sound? If you heard somebody say that to you, have you ever heard anybody say anything like that to you at an open house? What do they do? Hand your flyer. Yeah. Well, the flyer probably doesn't have all that information listed about like remodeling the kitchen and all that stuff. Right. And, and you think people will notice it, but they don't. You, I'd still point it out. What would you think about me as an agent? Really know down to about what's happening. You're in communication with the seller, but from the house. How would you, did you feel like, because remember I told you you have a very short window of opportunity to make an impression. This is it. The greeting and the follow-up are the time you have to show that I know what I'm doing. Even if you're brand new, you can do that. Could you memorize those things? Yeah. Easily, right? Could you preview houses and have some other alternatives? Because I'm here to tell you the chances are, I, I need to look up an NAR. It used to be 93% of the people would not buy the house they see open. Would it be a good idea if you to have other houses that you have seen when you're previewing to, to tell them about? Yeah. Because you said I was professional. I knew what I was talking about. You think it's important to somebody when they're choosing a buyer's agent? No. Yeah. Okay. So let's go around and practice that. I'm going to say, tell me your name. Tell me just the general information and with the price. Tell me your apartment. I don't care. What, tell me something. Your grandparents' house. Okay. Uh, my name is Kaylee McKinney. Uh, do I tell them like what company I'm with or no? No, I just said, let me tell you a little bit about the house. Okay. Uh, so the house has four bedrooms, three baths, uh, master suite is on the main floor. All the other bedrooms are upstairs. Um, there's a full basement, uh, 2,400 square feet. Um, there's a pool in the backyard that has an outdoor grill and bar area, all concrete, brand new. Um, the kitchen was newly remodeled. Uh, within the past year, um, and there's a brand new fence on the uh, backyard, and the price is four hundred fifty thousand. Perfect. Okay, your turn. My turn. Okay. Um, I'm Amanda Woodson. Um, this apartment has four bedrooms. It has two baths. Um, also a garage, uh, twelve hundred square feet. It was recently um, new carpeted. Uh, brand new floors, and we also have a brand new renovated clubhouse, and it's fourteen hundred a month. Okay. Hi, my name is Oscar Montejo. Uh, in this house, we got three bedrooms, two and a half baths, um, 
unfinished basement on the bottom with a four car garage. Kitchen and uh, kitchen and living room downstairs are already open for concept, flowing with one another. Floors have been just uh, redone last year. Square um, footage on my house is roughly 19, well, I wouldn't say roughly, but 1900 square feet. Uh, open backyard concept with a six foot privacy fence. Uh, your price that. Perfect. Was that hard? Yes. That's okay. It's not like sitting there, you know? Like have to... You know what I would honestly do? I would practice. Yeah. I'm just driving around. Hi, I'm Beverly. Let me tell you a little bit about this house. It's got five bedrooms, three full baths. It's 2,497 square feet on the first two floors, plus 1150 in the basement. I mean, I would just, the more you do it, and honestly, I would practice with each other. Guys, when you want to be good at this, so when you're in front of the public, those that's your future business on the line. So it's going to take you a while to get comfortable with it, but after it's not going to take you a long time. After you do several open houses, you'll start to feel a lot more comfortable with it. But practice. Say it out loud. Say it without your notes. And practice like just not stopping and starting and um and that kind of stuff. Just look at, you can even practice with your spouse, your girlfriend, your mom, your dad, your brother, your dog. Looking at them. Hi, I'm Beverly. Let me tell you a little bit about this house. It's a five bedroom, three full bath house. We're on the Ga Brookshire Golf. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get used to doing that. That's the that will help you quite a bit because you don't want to. Um, again, you don't want You want to be good when you're in front of the general public. So after you do that, just say, well, you know what? Take a look around. Oh, and if you wouldn't mind filling out a questionnaire when you're done, the seller would really like to know what you guys thought of that property. And then let them look. Uh, I. Have <laughs> I had a, uh, I was at a, bro a broker's open. A broker's open is when agents are invited by the listing agent and they feed, they have like salad and lasagna or whatever, and they feed you to come to the house and take a look on it. It's usually during the week, like 11 to one or whatever. One, the general public, this was not a Keller Williams listing, thankfully. It was another brokerage <laughs> and the agent, I knew her, she's been in business a long, long time. I'm sure she's retired long, long ago. But um, a general, some of the general public came there and a bunch of realtors and she was leaning the person go, and this is the kitchen. <laughs> and this is the dining room. It's like, well, duh, I couldn't have figured that out for myself because the kitchen has a dishwasher and a refrigerator. Well, how about that? Don't do that. I don't know if she thought she was like showcasing the house, but it was, I just thought, oh my gosh, I would never use her. If you're that stupid, I'm sorry, that's stupid. I'm very blunt too, but I mean, so don't be mad. No, don't. I mean, I just try. I honestly try to treat them like friends. I really do. I, you're my friend. You don't know it yet, but you are. I know it. And honest to goodness, one of my best friends was a former client. I've had a lot of people I'm very close with and are friendly with that were that were past clients. I, you know, I just there's some great people out there, and you're going to find them too. Okay, so when they're looking at the house, you don't have to like follow them everywhere, but I would stand somewhere in the area where you can see the front door because some people are going to try to get out without talking to you again. And I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not giving up my Sunday afternoon for that. <laughs> so I'll, if they start making a beeline for it, I'll step in and say, what'd you think? And listen, just be quiet. What'd you think? And you can tell, like, sometimes the people who don't want to give you the information are the most serious. I've had that happen quite a bit, too. So somewhat, remember, 93, it used to be 93. I haven't, I don't have the recent numbers. But the vast majority of people are not going to buy the house you're holding open. They don't know what's inside. They're coming to find out. So they're going to give you an objection. Okay, write objection on your on your page. And I'm going to tell you, the objections you're going to get. They won't say it exactly like I'm going to tell you, but it'll be the same objection. I think there's normally roughly four objections people give you. One is price. This is a little more than we want to spend. Or we think we're going to go higher and get something nicer. Okay. That, that's not, I have a price objection, but that's how they're going to say it. Okay. 
Another one is a size objection. Okay, so number two is size. We really don't want something this big. Or, gosh, this isn't much bigger than the house we have. We need an, we need an extra bedroom. Things like that. That is a size objection. The third is an age objection. And this will come in um, with new homes where there's not a lot of trees, not a lot of uh, mature landscaping, or they don't have the, the cute little nooks and hardwood floors and things like maybe Meridian Kessler House, the older homes. Or they'll say, this house, here's another size objection. My house was built in the 70s. And everything was built like, well, like this is a casement opening, just the door size. To go from the family room to the kitchen, there was a door side, a casement opening. To go from the kitchen to the living room was a casement opening. Now everything is what? Open. Okay. So they say, I really want something more open. They're giving you a size objection. You see what I'm saying? If it's a house that like everything else, say you can tear out this wall and make this open because I did it. I did it in my house. I really did. I opened this whole wall up. So, um, understand and and then the last one is a specific feature and i find this a lot when like i have a house with a basement but it's not finished we really want a finished basement or we were really hoping for uh, a garage with a workshop or a third bay things like that we really need a fenced yard it's something specific that you have to know about okay so you're sitting there and they're telling you this house isn't working but You've seen at least 10 homes this previous week, right? What should you be thinking? What house do I know? They said, this, this house is too big. Like if you, do, if you have it holding a two-story open, maybe say, you know what? Do you like ranch homes? I saw a really cute one this week. In fact, I, here, this one, have you been to this house? This is cute. And what I would also do on my sheets when I had them, I would do the picture of the front of it and I would write down things like, Updated master, ma magnificent kitchen, fenced yard, things like that. I'd write down just a few things that would help jog my memory. Because after you've seen 10 houses, they're going to start running together. Just trust me, they will. To say, this house, oh, let me tell you about this one. And I would talk to them like I'm telling my friend. The kitchen on this was magnificent. They did a nice GE profiles range oven with a microwave they had granite countertops and there was huge areas if you like to cook it huge place you can have three or four people in there helping prepare the meal all at once and it's open to the family room now while you're describing things watch their reaction watch their eyes if they start saying things like if they raise their eyebrows a little bit if they lean in if they do anything really or something you want to find out if they're liking it they will tell you it's like that show. Did you see the movie, the show Lie to Me? Okay, it was only on for a couple of years. I love the show. This guy lived with the Aborigines and he knew how to, the police would bring him in because he could look at people and tell when they're lying and when they're not. Like it would be just a little twitch of the eye or like a, a finger move or something. And he'd go, oh, they're here. And he was always right. It's kind of like that. It's reading body language. Um, but what you want is to be able to offer them an alternative. You don't want them to say, okay, well, thanks, goodbye. You want to have product knowledge. So if they say they don't like this, what about this? That makes sense? Yeah. If I was a buyer and I came into an open house and someone did that to me, I would think, oh, they must really know the market. Wouldn't you? And you don't have to say I was previewing homes. You can say, you know what? I was showing homes the other day and this house, a true story. I'll tell you a true story. This is, this was so cool. I'd been in business for about three or four years and I was holding a house open for my broker, McSheets. I used to be at Century 21 Sheets and it was a vacant house. It was very contemporary. And in my previewings, there was a house caddy corner across the street that was also held up, but that was also listed by Century 21 Sheets, but it had a different listing agent, Dick Miniman. So I previewed that one. It was a very different house. So the people came into my open house and they said, I said, so what'd you think? They said, this is not for us. I said, really? Why is that? They said, we like, we're very traditional. We like crown molding and hardwood. And I said, oh, do you like like chair rail, uh, crown molding, lots of wood? He goes, yeah. I said, do you like kind of an earthy feel with a stone fireplace? Yeah, we did. And I said, I'm going to show you that home. 
And I walked across the street. It was vacant. I opened it up for them. And I said, please come back when you're done. They bought that home. And this was probably, it's, it would be like selling a $550,000 house now. 3% on that, figure it out. That's a lot of money. But if I didn't know, if I didn't have the things written down on a piece of paper, I wouldn't know to go send that to them. You see what I'm saying? And then I listed a house they sold. They had to sell. So that was two transactions just by having product knowledge. Do you see how knowing what's out there is important? So if I'm holding a $200,000 house open, people usually, I would know like 30% higher, 30% lower. So that would be $60,000. I'd look for homes that are $150,000 to $250,000 if I was holding a $200,000 house open. And I would go out um, within like two miles, stay in the same school district. But know that. The other thing is I've done this a number of times. I've sold a number of new homes this way. If I was by a subdivision that had builders within a mile or two, I would go visit every one of the builders rep that week and say, hey, I'm having a newer house open. It's like four years old. But if somebody wants to build, I, I can't bring them because I'm stuck in an open house. Can I call you and consider that a registration? Because if you, quote, register them with a builder, they'll pay you money if they build with that builder. The builder will pay you. So I filled a number of houses like that. Never even showed him anything. I just said, like, one lady said, oh, we really had something new. I said, you know, have you checked out Hickory Farms? Davis is building in there, and their model is fabulous. You might really like it. And I'm just talking to them. I'm just telling them about it. It has a main floor master. Is that something to be good for you or not? The, they have two models. The main one has a main floor master. It's got three bedrooms up, huge kitchen, big island. It's all open to the living area. How do you build that relationship with the builder? I go in during the week. They're, they're there usually from 12 to 6. I just walk in and say, and in fact, a couple of people used to used to work here. I say, hi, I'm Beverly Fast Sinclair with Keller Williams. If they don't have anybody, they'd like to talk to you because you may be a source of business for them too, right? Say, so you know, I'm, I'm here because I'm holding a house open, a newer house at Cottingham Estates or whatever. And just in case somebody doesn't want an existing, they want new, I want to find out what you're offering. And let them tell you about the builder, let them show you around the house if they want to, let them talk to you. And if you see, some, I would never lie to anybody, but if you see something nice, comment and say, that's really nice. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, things like, I would say things like that and get to know the person there. You could be sources of business for each other. Trust me, they'll, they'll be happy to talk to you. Trust me, they will. And when you're leaving, say, you know, if I have anybody that I can send over, I, I'll be at an open house. If I send somebody over, can we call that registering until I get here or something? They're going to say yes, probably, you know. And then when they leave, I would make sure I had their phone number and say, Mindy, I have sent somebody over. It's Carl and Mary. They're driving a, a blue sedan. They're from Minnesota, they're moving here, and I told them about the model. Okay, great, thanks, and then I get paid on it. But if you don't have product knowledge, how would you know that? Do you see how important it is to go out and be, familiarize yourself with the area? Because if you don't have an alternative, you're gonna lose people. You've gotta have something else that could interest them. And builder reps, I'm telling you, they would be happy to have you come in. Happy, happy, happy. Now I have a question. When you have, uh, like, say you uh, host an open house and you find a buyer and they're also on the seller house, when it comes to commission, the, the sellers typically pay that, right? The sellers pay the commission for both parties. So, but you get paid by the, if you, if you have somebody comes and they buy this house, yes, you would get a commission for buying that. Usually, like my house I have now that I just listed as my own personal house. You know, I try to list for 7% if I can, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half to the listing side, three and a half to the buyer's side. But if you bring the buyer and the listing agent with their portion and you get the other three and a half. So, yeah. So, when you, um, like when they buy the house, you get the commission off that. And then when they go to sell their house, would you also get the commission off of it? It's two separate jobs. Okay, that's what I was thinking. And sometimes if they're buying up, I'll give them, I'll do it for six and a half percent because you also bought from me. You know what I'm saying? I'll give them a little bit of a break or, you know, that's just what I do. You need to get that approved. But I, if they're 
selling 200 and they're buying 300, I'm more than happy to give them a little bit of a discount, you know, thousand dollars off that, you know, and it makes them happy. Um, you don't have to though, if you can get 7% out of all of them, more power to you. Aha, so far. What ahas do you have so far? So far. Oh, your market that you're going to show around? Mm hmm So the fatal link, something that you're showing right now, you're like, oh, well, I got this that I showed, I just had last week or this a couple days ago. That might be interesting. And talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because... Most agents are not doing that unless they've been trained by me or Bill. That's my and Bill's retired. So he's the one who taught me how to do it. He didn't teach me how to do this. He told me don't hand him anything. And that was the best advice I ever got. A true story. I had a guy. <laughs> he was a very experienced agent. He goes, don't hand him. Can I hand him a picture of the house? I said, no, don't hand them anything. And he, just, he was like almost starting to sweat. You guys got to go, I don't want to do this. And he came back. He goes, okay, you're right. It works. <laughs> So what do you do if you have like people that walk in and you know you'll go through everything, you'll introduce yourself, they give you the name, but then they say, Do you have something that I can take with me? So you know what? The listing agent didn't lead some for me. But um that's the other thing. But if you fill out like this questionnaire, I will send you a flyer tonight. The other thing is if, if someone doesn't like the house and you're building a rapport, always look for a reason to get back with them on something. Ask them a question maybe they don't know the answer to, but you might. Um, say like um, I can send you the listing for this tonight. Would it help if you saw the tax assessor records? You can see the square footage and, and the taxes and everything. I'll, I'll email it to you tonight. That's a piece. You know, you look for some reason to get back with them. So people were going back. Buyers have looked at the house. They're coming back, and I'd say, "What do you think? Give me an objection." We're going to do this a number of times. So. Uh, the house is too expensive. Too expensive, really? Have you what price point are you uh, comfortable investing in? Uh, two hundred fifty. Okay. Have you talked to a lender to get pre-qualified yet? Uh, no. That's really easy. And like me as a realtor, I don't get involved in your finances. But in this market where things are selling so fast, it would help if you had some. You could tell the seller the house you want to buy. Hey, someone's looked at my financial information and I'm good for this loan. It'll make them feel more confident in you. Um, I can give you names. I don't get anything out of it, but I can give you names of a couple of lenders I like. He said that might be helpful for you. Yeah, they can do it over the phone. It takes five minutes. Um, and I give him like Keegan Will's name. He has an office here. I just, he knows so much. Okay, good. Give me an objection. Um, the age of the home. Give me, give me like a buyer would give it to me. It, it seems like an older house. The eight foot ceilings. Yeah. So you like nine foot ceilings? Yeah. Lots of windows. Yes, I'm very open. Very open. Okay. So you're a new home buyer. Have you ever considered building or? No. Okay. You just want to buy newer homes? Mm -hmm. Well, it won't be in this subdivision because this house is, these homes were built in the 1980s. But do you know where Hickory Farms is? No. And I will take my little piece of paper and I'll turn it over and say, we are right here. If you go down here and take a right. In fact, I showed a house and I'll pull it. Out. I said, this house might really interest you. It's on the market. It's listed at 325. Is that in a price point you're comfortable with? Okay. This has four bedrooms, but it's very, very open. Like the first floor, there's only one wall really. And that's for the office. It has a closed door. The kitchen, dining room, living area is totally open. Nine foot ceilings on the first and the second floor has a master bath as big as a bedroom with this huge soaking tub. Does that sound like something you might want to be interested in? Uh -huh. well, what are you doing at six o'clock? Nothing. Well, you know what? Here, let me get your, what's the best number to reach you at? I don't say what's your phone number. What's the best number to reach you at? You see what I'm saying? I will call you. I'll, I'll try to see if I can get us in tonight at six o'clock. Okay. Again, I'm always looking for a reason to get back with them on something. But had I not gone and previewed that house, I wouldn't be able to. Okay. Give me an objection. The house and the lot are too small. Too small. Okay. If you're going to dream out loud, what would your new home look like? Uh, probably five bedroom, one story house. 
Five bedroom, one story. That's going to be difficult, but not impossible. And at least acre and a half, two acres of lot. Okay. Have you been a uh, price point in mind that you're living in it? No, not at the moment. Okay. That'd probably be the first thing to do because um, whoever you sell to, they'll want to know that they're taking the property off the market, that you're good for the loan. And I don't get into your finances. I don't get anything out of it or anything, but I can give you some names of people that I've worked with that are very, very good and their fees are fair. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to have, is this your best number? I'm going to have Keegan call you. Or I would always give at least a couple of names. Keegan would be a great one, but get a couple of names so you don't look like you're pushing one person. Um, then once he he will tell you, he can even tell you roughly what your new payment will be with taxes and insurance included. Do you think that, that would be helpful information to have? Sure. Okay, great. So you, I did, and when people start telling you what they want, I'll usually start writing it down. I'll take one of my, I bring a bunch of those half folded open house sheets. I'll turn them over and start writing on them. Five bedroom ranch, acre to acre and a half. And I'll say, and I'll just be honest with them. I'll say, it's going to be hard to find a ranch home with five bedrooms on an acre and a half unless it's really, really expensive. But I can certainly sell you, I can certainly show you what we've got. Is this the best email to reach you at? Yeah. Buy from Beverly at kw.com. Great. <laughs> I'll be in touch. And by the way, here's one of my cards. I'll hand them a card. But I want to make sure I have their information more than they have mine. Because I know I won't forget to call them. Give me another objection. Um, I want a bigger house, but it's, uh, I don't want like, yeah, I want a bigger house and I want like mature landscaping, but I don't necessarily want it to be totally outdated. Totally done. What about if we found a house that had a lot of mature trees and nice landscaping, but the kitchen, the bathrooms, things have been updated? That would work. You know, you ought to check this house in Sunblast. I saw this house. This one. This house in Sunblast, if it's a more price to what I'm holding open, this house might really fit the bill. It had a beautiful yard. It looked like a park in the back and big, big trees, a lot of shade. It um, The kitchen has been totally redone and the master bath has been totally redone. The third one hasn't, but the second, the first bedroom has been redone. And it's a similar price point. Would this be something you might like to take a look at? Yes. Okay. What are you doing at six o'clock or 530? I make an appointment. They can't do it. Say, okay, I can do Friday. At, I can do Monday at 530 or Tuesday at six. Which one works for you? Uh, give an alternative. See, it's not hard to get another appointment if you can give them some of the information they're looking for. Okay. So I like the house, but I don't really care for the location. The neighbors have a lot going on. Yeah, I noticed the guy next door with his dogs and the car in the front on Jack's. Yeah, I understand. If you were to dream out loud, what would your ideal neighborhood look like? Um, definitely a gated community. Gated community, okay. Maybe on a golf course. Okay, on a golf course, great, great. Have you, have you a price in mind that you're looking to invest in? Um, at least for 500 Okay, great. Well, I don't know if you're familiar how the multiple listing system works, but I can enter all of your information into that you want, you know, a gated community, you want good neighbors, you want between four and 500,000, and everything is listed by any company, whether it's another Keller Williams office or Emax office or whatever, it will pop up and I will email you immediately when it hits the market. That's my instant buyer notification program. All I'm doing is I'm putting them on a reverse prospect. You'll learn how to do it, piece of cake. But I will email you immediately so you'll be the first one to know when something hits the market. What's the best What's the best email to contact you at? Would you have a hard time giving me an email if I told you that? That's right, you're gonna show them what the benefit they're gonna get out of it is. Okay, give me another objection. Um. The house is too traditional. Too traditional. How so? It's too too much wood, uh, wood baseboard, crumbling, uh, more of a modern, uh, modern type of family looking for maybe a pool or something, big yard for my two kids. Play okay. Great 
a good school district. Okay. Uh, and then maybe something more, a little bit secluded. Okay. Major intersections. All right. Um, just question if this was painted wood, would that make a difference? No. You want the ceiling heights higher? Yes. Okay. That means you're a newer home buyer because this house was built in the 1970s and eight foot ceilings were standard then. So it sounds like you want nine or 10 foot ceilings. Somewhere around there. That's a new home. Everybody wants to be in the same room where everything's happening. I understand that. Um, you know, there's a couple of new home subdivisions not too far from here. Are you familiar with Carmel? Uh, no, I'm moving from the south side. Sounds like okay, great. Well, let me draw you a map. I'm grabbing you see why you have a bunch of those open house things. I'm drawing, I'm drawing. We're here. You're gonna go north on Keystone, 136th Street. You're gonna take a right, and then at uh, what is the name of that street? Cotswold, you're gonna take a north. The subdivision on the right is called Willow Farms. And you're gonna there's a couple of houses in there. I've seen this one, and I'll show them to you. So I'm saying, okay. All right, now I'm giving you objections. You're going to have to answer them. <laughs> if, you, if you need to, anytime you can leave. Okay. Ask me what I thought. Uh, what do you think of the house? It's okay. Well, uh, what was not okay about it? It just feels so closed in. It's just like room, room, room. This. Are you wanting more of an open concept? Where yeah, I am. Like tall ceilings. Are you view like this neighborhood or what were you thinking? It's okay. Place? It's okay. It'd be nice if it's a little bit north. I, my husband works downtown and I work in Kokomo. So we can go a little bit north. Okay, so like Westfield area? Maybe. Although I hear the Carmel schools are really good. Sure. Um, would you be interested in looking at other houses? You haven't given me enough information to warrant that yet. Give me an alternative. Talk to me about an alternative. Have you seen the subdivision at? Have you seen this house at? Remember, if it, you're looking at something that was built in the 80s, you need to find something else within a mile or two that's newer. So pull that out. Even if it's not the right house, pull it out. Okay. Uh, or would you be interested in looking at this house that uh, was built in the last 10 years and has the open concept of like what you're wanting and the tall ceilings and great school district? Maybe. Tell me more about it. You gotta get me excited about it. Um, it has a brand new, newly built uh, kitchen with the open range or the open stove. You know, the hood vent. Stove. Yeah, yeah. yeah the vent. Um, it's got uh, the gated community has um, a golf course there. There's a pool um, in the backyard. Uh, you have the sheet in front of you. You can just talk about it. Okay. Great. How much is it? Uh, four hundred thousand. <laughs> That'd be nice. We won't find that. But <laughs> sure, I'd like to take a look at that. Um, would you be? Are you open to meet tonight at six? Yeah, that sounds good. And then, and then you just ask them to like start contacting. What's well, so, I never say what's your phone number, what's your email. I say what's the best number to reach you at. <laughs> See, that's my phone number. People, it's like an idiot. Right. <coughs> okay. Ask me about what I thought. So, how did you? What did you like? It's a nice house. I like the kitchen. I like how it's open to the family room. Okay. <laughs> Anything else that you didn't like, or I? Those secondary bedrooms are really small. Plus, I think I'm going to need four bedrooms, not three. Okay, so you need a bigger, more bedrooms, a little bigger, large family you have? Yes, I have 14 children. Oh, nice. <laughs> I praise you. <laughs> Did you see the neighborhood down the street right off of Keystone? What's it called? Uh, Cobblestone. No, I haven't. Okay, well, they actually have some really nice homes that are bigger. Have a shoe. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one shape like shoe. <laughs> um, and they... I completely lost my train of thought about the shoe. <laughs> um, what did I tell you? That you wanted something bigger, more bedrooms. And what about the bedrooms? They need to be bigger. Okay, talk to me about that. Okay. Um, they 
So on that, do I say the house or do I just say the bedroom? Both. Okay. So the house is a little larger. The bedrooms, um, they offer four to five bedrooms and they are slightly larger than what's offered here in this hmm. house. Okay. And it's also in the same school district as well. That sounds good. Okay. Um, would you be interested in stopping by around six? Sure. Okay. Um, what's the best number to reach you? Or is this the best number to reach yeah. you? And I'll call and confirm. Okay. Okay, good. So what did you think about the house? I didn't like it. Not at all. What was wrong with it? Um, I hate all this wallpaper. God, what were the sellers thinking? Ugh. Okay. I've people do that. I'm giving you things I've heard before. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure, more no wallpaper. And what about the style of the house? Do you like it? Um, it's okay, but... My husband's in a rock band, and I really want to put them in a soundproof area in the basement. This doesn't even have a basement. Okay. Uh, and then as far as the age of the house, do I care? Open concept? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, perfect. Well, I have a house that's two neighborhoods south of here, uh, same school district. It has a finished basement, and there is one area that we can probably dedicate it to a soundproof dungeon. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. That's good. No wallpaper. Should it, you know, more mo a little bit more modern uh, house than what you saw today. Um, are you open tomorrow at six? Yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, See, he told me a little bit more about the house to get me excited. Yeah. Yeah. So I have uh, a question. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, is this your contact information that I have down here that you put? Yes, it is. Okay. I will confirm with you tomorrow. Okay, sounds great. Perfect. Thank you. So with that, then, so whenever we first initiate. Do we focus solely on the dislikes, not the likes? I would say, I would say, would you like? And they'll probably tell you a thing or two and say, if they don't like it, they really don't like it, they'll tell you right away they didn't like it most of the time. Or they'll they'll see people, I think they're afraid of hurting our feelings. Uh, I'll say, so if they tell me a little thing, but they don't like to act that interested, watch their eyes, watch their expressions, watch how their body moves. You can tell when somebody likes something when they know. Uh, and say, so what didn't you like? That's when you're going to, you know, and keep digging. And then I would also, I would always, if I'm offering an alternative, I'll say, okay, like, um, be, I'm, the, I'm the agent or the buyer. Uh, so what'd you think? It was okay. I like the garage. Okay. What didn't you like? Um, the garage. The garage. What didn't you like about the garage? Well, it was only a two-car garage. I was looking for maybe three or more. Okay. Um, other than that, do you like the style of the home? No. Okay. Have you been to Cobblestone Woods yet? No. It is, I'll draw you a map on how to get there. I showed this, have you seen this house? I will usually I show them the MLS sheet so they can get an idea of what it looks like. This house you might be interested in because it has a three-car garage plus a workshop. It's big garage. Um, and it's got, it's the same kind of configuration, two-story, blah, 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 blah. But you just want to be able to talk off the top of your head about some of the stuff. Okay. Ask me again. Y'all are going to do objections again. Okay. Uh, like, ask you, like, how do you like what yeah. thoughts were on the house? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, how did you feel about this property? I liked it. What uh, were some key features that you liked about it? I like the main level master. I like the closet was really big. It's a shame the secondary bedrooms don't have big closets too. Would that be something you're interested in, like walk-in closets for your secondary bedrooms? Do they, do they have houses like that? Uh, there's uh, some in the neighborhood, uh, a couple uh, streets down that have some that are pretty similar to this house. I house. just showed it this week, yeah. Just go ahead, yeah, I just showed one this week that had second, I would do that. Just showed one this week that has uh, secondary bedrooms that have walk in closets. Really? Mm -hmm. Where's it at? Um, it's a couple neighborhoods down, um, like two neighborhoods down south. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Would you be interested in looking at that house and seeing what it has to offer? Sure. Would you be available at um, six o'clock tonight? Yeah. And then, um, is there a good phone number that I can reach you at? Yeah. Here you go. And then I will uh, call and confirm with you to make sure we are uh, all good to go at six o'clock. Sounds good. Thank you. Good. Okay, another objection. Okay. So what'd you think? How'd you like it? It's nice. It's a nice house. Probably a little too nice for me. 
Okay. Um, hmm. Where do I go with that? <laughs> what am I giving you? What kind of objection? Pricey. Pricey. Yes. Yeah. Right. Price. So then with that, not to break away from that one. So do I automatically just go into price I was, or? Yeah. I'd say, okay, what price are you comfortable investing in? Not like how much can you afford? I would never right. ask anybody to ask. Okay. I'd say, what price point are you comfortable investing in? Okay. So what price point are you comfortable with? Oh, probably 150 to 200. Okay. Um, have you seen the neighborhood down the street, Cobblestone? No. Okay. Well, they actually have homes that's similar to this one, but they are slightly smaller square foot. Um, but it is within that price point range that you're looking at. What are they like? Um, just like this one, but the bedrooms, instead of having five, they only have three, four. Okay, that would be okay. Okay. Um, would you be available tomorrow or possibly Tuesday? It's already 5.30 right now. Sure. Okay, does one, two work for you? I'll have to get back with you on that. Okay. <laughs> is this a good number to reach you? Yes, it is. Good girl. Okay. Good girl. I'll be confirmed. <laughs> okay. So, how would you like the house? Um, I did like it. Okay. What uh, what's about to you? What what what, what 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 did you like about the house? What didn't I like? What did I like the kitchen being open to the family room? Okay. I like the size of the closets. I really like the yard. Okay. Anything that you don't like? I want a main floor master. Okay. It would be. I really don't want to do stairs anymore. No stairs. I'm 95 years old. I don't want to do stairs anymore. So you are you looking more for a main floor, like just a one story house, or was two, it, two stories out of the picture? We're still in the picture. It, it can be a two story as long as the master's master on the main. Room. Okay. Uh, or a so ranch. I, okay. So I have a house that I just showed two days ago that's two streets down the road. Uh, and if you have time right now, uh, since we're wrapping up this open house, I can go ahead and I'll take you over there to see it. The main. Uh, Tell me about it before you're, you're going going for the kill too quick. Okay. Tell me about it. Get me interested in it. Same features as this house, except that the main uh, master is on the first floor. Uh, same car garage, all that. Pretty identical, except for that the main uh, bedroom is downstairs, walk-in closet, uh, master bath is attached all to the same first floor. Uh, and it's, it is priced a little bit higher since the main. I think one of the best features is that the main uh, bedroom is down on the first floor, so it's about ten ten thousand dollars. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Well, let me wrap up this open house, and then if you mind, in five ten minutes, we can go over there and I'll take, have you take a look at it. Sounds good. Do you feel like you can hear objections now when people are telling you things? Mm -hmm. Okay. And always, and I would say, you know what? I showed a house you might like. That. Have you seen this house? This is over in Brookshire North. This is a really great house. It's got, and I will talk about it to get them excited to overcome their objection. And then. What do you do? Um, so say you're hosting this open house for another. Um, agent. Um, another agent. And say like this house is perfect for them. I know it doesn't happen like all too often. But it could, yeah. This house is like perfect for them. They want to put in an offer and everything. Like you just. Yeah, say, I have to say, say, tell you what, let me finish up this open house. There is a McDonald's on the corner of 126th and Keystone. Can we meet there at six o'clock tonight? We still write up the offer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, try to find out if they've been pre qualified by lender, but absolutely. So I'd be happy to help you. So the other thing when you're talking with people, you want to listen to what they're, uh, in my mind, I would categorize people A buyer, B buyer, or C buyer. A buyers had a reason they had to move. We're being transferred and I want my family with, a, with me before the summer's over so my kids can make friends before they go to their new school. That's an A or that'd be an A seller. I'd take them anyway. <laughs> so I'll look at uh, an A buyer, might be the same thing. Uh, we're being transferred here. Okay. Yeah. Or um, I'm being deployed to the military. I've got a report in 60 days. That's an 
and A, Brian, I get my family set before we go. Listen for what makes them move. I have one lady come in, she goes, oh, we just like to look at homes. That's really how long you've been looking? Three years? Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm not going to be your realtor. Bye-bye. I waste my time. Okay. So, this is what, this is the, um, the lead sheet. You can do that too. I would ask, a, I'll show you. In fact, hang on, let me show you mine. Let's see. I think I emailed it to somebody last time I taught this class. So, oh. I need to log out from whoever this is. Oops. I think that's my password. It's automatically done. Uh, nope. Oh, please. Are you kidding? I don't want them to manage my password. <laughs> or manage my account. Okay, let's do this. Keep my account. Oh, no, no. Okay, well, you have to give me your, write down your emails if you want me to send it to you, but it's, it really is. Let's see if I can do this. No. Um, it really, it, it's nothing. It's a half, if it's a half sheet of paper, Welcome to my open house. Let's see. What feature you like best? There's space on the right. What features did you not like? What do you think of the price? High, medium, low, and then their information. That's it. Okay. Safety first. Um, I don't know, you guys probably haven't been thinking of it because you aren't focused in on real estate, but in the past several years, it's happened more with new home sales consultants that people come in and kill them. There's been two that have died in the past, what, 10 years? And granted, it's a big nation and everything else, but still, you want to be smart about um, how you um, protect yourself. Uh, I learned this the hard way. I went to a real estate self-defense class and I realized everything I was doing was wrong. I would walk in front of the people to turn on the lights and make sure the light was the room was well lit when I walked into a room. I would go downstairs first and turn on all the lights and both of those I was letting somebody else block my ex entrance, my exit rather. You never do that. You let them go first. Um, so park on the street and make sure you're not hedged in so if you have to get away you can. Meet the neighbors. If, when you're showing houses, you can't always do that, but never turn your back on a prospect. After a while, I mean, and maybe you don't feel this because you're a guy, but do you ever get that creepy feeling in the back of your neck like something's not right? Mm -hmm. Trust it. Trust it every time. And don't, if someone's giving you the creeps, get out of the house. Say, you know what? I've got, a, I've got an important call I got to make. Go ahead and look around and go stand on the front porch or stand in the front yard. It is not worth your life. Um, at the front desk, we always say, if someone call, says, I, I need you to pull the red file, that means get somebody out here and they should ask, where are you at? And somebody will, you know, or call your family or friend and tell them, if I call for the red file, say, I'm at 1234 Main Street, I need the red file pulled. I really need that file. And that means I need somebody over here right away. And I'm a big person. I'm not usually scared. But I, 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 the self-defense class, I ended up getting my third degree in karate. I loved it. I loved the thing. But I'm at, I had a house out by Deer Creek. Well, it's Verizon now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 
no, clips grew off. I, it was it was Deer Creek back then, but um, it was on five acres. Everybody had five acres. It was a vacant house, and this guy said he wanted to see it. And at eleven o'clock, and I said, "Sure, no problem. I'll meet you out there." And I happened to mention uh, that'd be great because I'm showing eleven thirty, so that'll be helping me to have them back to back. He never showed up, and the phone number he gave me was wrong. Was I stupid? No. Oh, you were. I was stupid. I was going to meet this guy out at a five and on five acres. Nobody would have heard me scream. I would have met him in a vacant house on my own. And had he had he shown up, had I not mentioned the eleven thirty, he could have showed up and tried to do whatever. I thought you were smart. I really did have an appointment at eleven thirty. I and I just and I realized then I'm stupid because I wouldn't. I tend to think that people are like me. I would never do that to somebody. So it, I don't understand people that would, you know, and, and that's, that's ignorant. That's a bad way to think. So be careful. Um, if you get, if you um, start feeling that hair on the back of your neck are just uncomfortable, like I said, get out of the house, unlock the doors. I will always unlock the doors in the front and the back when I'm having an open house in case I have to leave, make sure you lock them before you go away, before you leave for the day. But um, if someone gives you the heebie-jeebies, um, get out of the house and just say, you know what, I'm not feeling well. I've got to wait here for my husband to come. I'm, I'm My stomach is killing me, you know, or so I don't make up something. Yeah. But do not, if you get that feeling, get out and protect yourself. Never walk into a room in front of them. Never go down the basement in front of them. I thought I was being a good realtor and I was being a good realtor as far as their consideration, but I wasn't considering myself, you know, establish an escape route. Never let them get between you. That's Italian karate. Never let them get between you and your exit. And if you're in like, if I'm here and you attack me and I can't have time to get over there you and they're coming at me with a weapon, I'm going to pick up a bigger, better weapon. I'm going to poke this in their ear. I'm going to shove it up their nose. I'm going to poke them in the eyes. I'm going to do anything. Grab something and use it as a weapon. This could be a weapon. You see what I'm saying? I've never had this happen, nor has anybody in this office. It is rare, but I don't want you guys to be the first, you know, just be careful. Um, um, I, you know what? He, I don't think he does anymore. He's the guy who did it. He is a sensei and he um, had a stroke. So I may see if I can offer it sometime because it's important. Like if somebody, guys, what do you think? If someone's going to attack you, where, where are they going to go for? <laughs> Down there, the, the family yeah. jewels. Yeah. The family jewels. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. You can always text somebody, lock, lock your fingers and aim for their eyes. One of these will get them. You see what I'm saying? Uh, for how they breathe. Remember that? Did you ever see uh, Miss Congeniality? Yeah. And Sandra Bullock? Yeah, you sing. Solar plexus, instep, knees, or groin. If you like, um, if somebody came up behind you, I would take the back of my shoe, rake it from their knees down their shin as hard as I could, and stomp on their foot. Um, yeah, I need to think about that. But just, just if they can't get you, they can't hurt you. The other thing is, if you're really uncomfortable and something bad happens, don't yell help, yell fire. People don't come when you yell help, but they will come when they hear fire. It's strange, but it's been proven to be true. Yell, the yell fire as loud as you can and, and don't be quiet and don't go easily. Don't let anybody take you. Fight tooth and nail, scratch them, do anything you have to. Don't, you know, and don't let them drive the car. You always want to meet somebody if you can. If it's a first time buyer, you can have them meet you here and they can be in your car, but introduce them to several people. So, yeah. 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 Well, you're a guy. Although it could happen, I guess. Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. I've heard, you know, yeah. I've heard some agents now, I don't know how, what the policy is, if there's policy in the office, even for uh, you know, realtors where they carry them. You can. I would be very uncomfortable if someone showed me their gun, put it in their hip while I'm going to take a going to show a house. I wouldn't like that. There's something called a Kubota. You can look those up. You can put them on your keychain. I have one. I think it's like a long pointy thing, and it has like grips where you grip it. Oh, yeah. You seen that? Mm -hmm. That could be a weapon. To break windows too. Yeah. Well, and you can poke them into somebody. You just want to get away. You don't. 
If somebody wants your car or your purse or whatever, give it to them, but don't hand them the keys. Throw them and run the opposite direction, okay? But whatever they want of yours can be replaced except your life. And you're not going to laugh at that. So um, I would always let my, I wouldn't necessarily tell my husband, I was going to say I'm showing houses, but, you know, if, if you're, if you're in trouble, call somebody, charge your cell phone too, and have like, I have a Mophie on mine. So, cause my phone is out by one or two o'clock as much as I use it. So have an extra charge. Again, I've never had anything happen. Open house safety toolkit, um, whatever, wherever you're at, this can be a weapon. This can be a weapon. I mean, you can use anything. And if someone's attacking you and you have a better weapon, attack them. They're going to expect you to run, go after them and do damage and get the heck out. I, that used to hit when I was, when I was in karate. I took karate for like five years. I loved it. But it was like, you know, when you had to think like, you know, you're pressing their eyes. And it just like Ugh. he said, but if it's between you and your child, who are you going to choose? It's like that guy's going down. Mm -hmm. OK. So do you feel like you could at least prep for an open house and you could do the greeting and everything? This is a very, very important stage is you follow up. And I would even call Sunday night. Say, hey, I met you at my open house today. I've been thinking and I found a house I think you might really like. I'm going to email it to you. But you mentioned that you liked main floor masters with big living spaces. This house is it. Um, is this the right email or, you know, whatever, get in touch with them right away. And then if they're an A client, they're being deployed, they have to buy a house before they move. Uh, husband's being transferred, they need to find something. Stay with them. I wouldn't call them every day, but I would call them frequently. If they're, I'm looking at houses and if I find the right one, I'll buy it. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that. But you're going to cultivate them, regardless of who they are, you're going to cultivate them. And that means you're going to put them in, um, you obviously want an appointment. That's the first thing you want. That's why I always want you to have something to show as an alternative. You don't like this house? This one, you say you wanted this and this and this. This house has this and this and this. Um, get that appointment. And I just go on the assumption, honestly, I never ask them if they're working. I used to ask people, are you working with a realtor? And what do you think I got a lot? Yes. And what is that? So that they don't have to work with you and be locked in with you? It's a blow off. They didn't get to know me. So I just go up and sometimes they're working with me. They just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. I did have one lady though, early on in my career, early on. She goes, yes. And I don't know why I asked her this. I just did. I said, do you like her? She goes, I can't stand her. Mm -hmm. I said, why are you working with her? She goes, a relocation company makes it. And I said, I'll work with your relocation company. All they want is the referral fee. She goes, you can? I said, yeah. I ended up selling them a house, selling that house when they bought their next house. That's three transactions. So when you get back home, you're going to be learning about KW Command and stuff. Um, this is all like ongoing, but put people in a database and you can put them on email campaigns. You can put them on um, a campaign is you touch them. There's a true story. There's a company called Hobbs Herder in California, and they wanted to prove that marketing works. So they sent a postcard once a week for eight weeks to this 600 neighbor, 600 house neighborhood. And it was fictional agents, Bob Jones. And they put the same guy's face on it. The guy didn't exist. Okay. They made it up, but then they called it into the survey. And who do you think would most able to say your house? Well, Bob Jones. You know, he was, he had, they found that eight touches is kind of top of mind. When you get eight touches, people are going to think about you. So you want a touch is a phone call. It's an email. It's a text. It's snail mail. It's a pop by. Hey, I thought of you. I thought you might want to do this. You want to get people in your system. And the nice thing about command is it does it all for you. You just have to select what you want. We call it an eight by eight, eight touches over eight weeks. And if one of us is a phone call, it will, it will prompt you when you log in, you need to call Bob and Sally today. Here's our phone number. Get the, And then after that, you can do 33 touch. I think that's quite a bit. I'd probably do 24 touch. If I heard from somebody 33 times in a year, I'm I don't know. I shouldn't say that. They've got, a lot of people make a lot of money doing that, though, but I wouldn't like it. Twice a month is fine by me. 
you know, get them actively looking, write an offer, close and get your money and, and keep in touch with your past clients. And then at the closing, I'll say, you know what? I've worked myself out of a job. Now that you're closed, who do you know that's looking to make a move in the near future? Not do you know somebody? Okay. Enter them into your database. That's KW Command. Add any appointments. Tag your prospects like ABC or you can, there's different tags you can put on there. Um, customize the, the touch of saying like eight by eight or 33 touch or a smart plan. And you'll learn all of this. This is something you're going to learn and convert them to active business that you close. Okay, open house best practices. I have never had anybody come wanting a speaker at an open house. They care about the house. That's a stupid idea, in my opinion. It might just so, do other people come in here and go, this is a stupid idea on the pre <laughs> on the stuff they tell you to do. I wouldn't host a speaker unless it's like a football player and everybody come to see the football player. Offer a gift, you can do a raffle, $25 gift card, but again, that's expensive, you know? And when you, especially when 